Why, hi there, it's me, Uncle Ron, and would you believe that uh, Tuesday, the 25th of August, marked the second full anniversary of Retro Sports Network's return to the airwaves. Now, technically, I think this channel started in 2016. Uh, not, don't know why, I actually. Oh, because I'd started to do some games and didn't want to clog my main channel, which now has been pretty much abandoned, with repeats or replays of games that I was doing. Uh, so it started with a very off-center game, the, the reboot, between the New York Giants and Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the 1978 football season. It was a Saturday night special, so it was done on a Saturday night. And was playing around with X-Split. And couldn't quite get the screen right, which I didn't realize at the time. So I think one of the end zones was kind of skewed. But the rest of it was fine. He was like the 2018 version of Action PC Football. And now here we are two years later, about to go to our third full year. Uh, providing, well, hopefully what you like for entertainment and sports and uh, of all that. Um, uh, three computers, a or two new computers, and a whole lot of experience later. I believe we are now up over 670 videos. Some games, some talk shows, some silliness, some maybe some body painting, and um, and two football, full football replays, a bunch of side projects, and coming up to the end of our second full baseball season. So that's a lot of sports to bring you and during the beginning part of the pandemic a lot of people watched and now that there's live sports back not as many people are watching but that's okay so what have i learned in the last two years when i started this channel in earnest um back in august of 2018 it seems like that was 20 years ago too uh i had just left fan sided after Two years there, nine, 20 good months and two years there, I have tried for years to make my living doing something sports related. And obviously, I'm never, especially at my age now, at 48, I'm never going to, uh, you know, excel at playing a sport, which is understandable. Uh, but as someone who tried to write for a while, um, you just never know how good or how bad you are. And I determined I wasn't all that good. And when I got unhappy at fans, I, had, uh, um, I applied for jobs elsewhere. And I'm glad I got out of that business to begin with. Uh, be, and applied for a job I knew I could do, which was right news and basic opinion on another website three or four nights a week and get paid for it uh, and paid in and write in a hurry which is something I had spent the last two years pretty much writing under self-imposed deadlines and all the training I had before before at Bleacher Report including doing live blogging which you're doing without any editing and on a wire and all the working from home and all that and so I had pretty much done that for about five years and when I applied for the job I never heard back and that told me whether it was true or not that my writing wasn't either a exciting be good or see what they wanted and I mean, the reason why you go do those places, Bleacher Report, at least when I was at BR, or Fansite, is to, that you have this kind of hope that you can move on to something else, that you can turn something into a career. And I got a lot out of it. I really, really did. I enjoyed, I, I, you know, I got paid by Bleacher Report to cover a World Series, which is, as, as a baseball fan, is the ultimate thrill the ultimate thrill to get paid to cover a world series and pablo sandoval's torching of justin verlander in game one of the 2012 world series will go down as one of my all-time favorite moments because 
I live blogged it, and I got paid to live blog it. I got paid to cover a Masters and a Players Championship. It, 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 all this stuff that was great, and then I had the blessed uh, fortune of getting to work with Dave Hill at Call to the Pen, and he and Chris Hedrick helped match me with Ricky Keeler at District on Deck, which is a whole other story onto itself. And Ricky and I were tremendous together. And Drew Douglas and I would have been tremendous together if Drew was a little more settled as opposed to being a freshman in college. It's nothing against Drew. That's the point in your life where you don't want to be tied down 30 hours a week. And believe you me, when the Nationals won the World Series last year, I was so thrilled. I was so thrilled to do that. And we made some mistakes together, but we got we did a lot of things and salvaged a blog. And at some point, that, it did really, really well. And so at the end of my career at Fansided, when I was covering the the Washington Capitals, which I enjoyed, I really enjoyed writing about hockey and learning about it, uh, but I wasn't writing 50 pieces a month by myself, and that's how you got paid. And so to leave that job, any, leave any job, is kind of risky. Uh, and especially when you're working from home, because I, I guess the overall part of that is you're just competing with so many other people. It's such a highly competitive field, and there are a lot of people who are generally better at what I did than what I did, and good luck to them. And so I figured for a little while I could either A, write on my own, which doesn't pay very well. I think at the most I was making 30 cents an hour. Or B, this kind of... You know, talk about gaming on YouTube and watch a bunch of gamers, Jimmy Broadbent, Matt Malone from iRacing, and of course Al Red Sox fan, who apparently started doing that after he watched me do it. You know, we really are each other's mutual admiration society when it comes to that sort of thing. Figured, what the hey, why not try it? Al said, do it live. For, don't listen to your inner Bill O'Reilly, do it live. So I did. And things kind of gathered momentum. And so two days a week, I was busy at lunchtime entertaining people. And then we moved on from at the end of that football replay on to uh, getting involved with Dave Gardner and helping to promote his roller hockey league and do the 1982 baseball replay, which was so much fun. And getting the Expos to win the World Series the same year that the Nationals won the World Series. They're the same franchise as far as I'm concerned. They pulled a double, and that is awesome. And then we started Digital to Dice, Dave and I. It was Dave's idea. I kind of went, another podcast, great. I haven't done any of those in my entire life. Certainly maybe not close to a 1,000 of them at, the, at that point. But I found the right guy. I found the right project. And I found the right working relationship. And so... A year and change later, we've just done our 53rd episode. And so somehow I was able to turn this into something I really wanted to do. Now, I could work harder at it. Hard to believe. Um, I could promote myself more. Um, I could really, really push the Patreon thing, which I've... And you see it during a baseball game, but I just keep quiet and take a drink in the middle of it. Uh, but I don't. I mean, a lot of this, especially in this year, is much more just keep your mind off of things and produce and, and entertain people. And that's what I hope I do is primarily entertain people. Some people like stand-up comedians. Some people like dramatic movies. Everyone seems to love the Hallmark Christmas movie when Big City Girl moves to small town Vermont and finds the man of her man of her dreams uh, covered in puppies and dark chocolate. Eh, that's not me. I, I entertain people by A, giving, I guess, some nostalgia, but B, doing, you know, trying to essentially, in my mind, produce if this was a writing thing, produces stuff that I'd want to read. And so 
that's the thing. I mean, this channel has on YouTube has grown from nothing to 725-ish subscribers. Uh, Twitch has 135 followers and X amount of subs, and I certainly wouldn't be able to pay any bills with what I make from this, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, you know, I, I do okay doing this, and I've got to interact with you all in some way or another. I get two or three emails a week from people, which I appreciate, and the ones that tell me that I do a great job, I gloss over quick as I never believe it, and... The ones that tell me I'm full of crap, sometimes I laugh at, and sometimes I share with other people. <laughs> and go, can you believe that? Um, what have I learned over the last two years? Uh, you're not going to make everybody happy. That That's number one. Um, people don't like the way that maybe you play the play a game, or how you play a game, or you don't play their game enough, or... Uh, their, your beliefs and how something should be done is very different from how they would do it. And people are not shy on the internet. They're going to let you know whether they don't like, if they don't like your stuff or not. Um, the ability of when to go live and when to tape is always interesting. Um, the connections that I've made in the industry. This is such a small industry, this hobby of ours of playing older sports games, uh, where we've talked to game creators and quick play creators and had chats with beta testers for games and gotten to look at things and just get a general sense of, of what a tight community it can be and going back to what I've said time and time again this is the golden age of sports sim game you can pretty much play any sport you want you can pretty much recreate any season or any championship that you want and you can do it generally in a quick play a medium play or a long play fashion you want a full football game on the tabletop you can do that if you want to roll out a rugby match in about 30 seconds you can do that in fact I have done that um, it really is just amazing that you can kind of pick your poison if if you will and do it uh, the close close friends I've made through this process Al Red Sox fan and Dave Gardner um, quality people, uh, more than more than just partners, but but genuine friends. Uh, baseball demos, who has no idea how good he is. Um, ID Jester, who I wish would come back to doing some sort of sports sims. Don't go overboard with it, but would do something you enjoy. Tabletop Delaware and Chris, who I interviewed one night early on in my channel and just felt a kinship to that was unbelievable even if he does root for that god-awful team in Columbus uh, the ones that I talk to on a daily basis in a Facebook Ivan Diaz from time travel baseball uh, Kurt Berglund from pine tar baseball Anthony Crooks from glory days boxing I'm telling you it really is just a small knit community there's no EAs here there's no Activisions here there's no Blizzard Entertainment. It's all just people who, oh, how could I ever forget? And we still have to post the interview that Dave and I did with Roberto Chavini. It's done. Um, we just have to record it. Uh, just people who you'd want to have a beer with that have a passion for sports, specific sports, that just shines through and every time I see Al do a, a boxing match using glory days baseball you can just feel the love in the cards although you're beating the crap out of each other and how Al just kind of gives that that extra oomph when Nave does a shootout hockey project you could just just feel the metamorphosis of how that 
kind of goes together. Um, I don't know how many games of action PC sports I've played in the last oh, 10, 15 years, but showing it off every day, um, knowing how that goes together, and never feeling to be amazed at what I don't expect to happen. That there's always that level of, no, did I just really see that? Did I just call that? Whether it's a walk-off home run by Mario Mendoza, or the night that Dave Gardner had the lights go out in a hockey arena, or Ellis Hobbs returning a kickoff at the gun to force overtime for the 2007 Patriots in that series that we did. It's just one of those things that it's like a good book. You never know how it's going to turn out. Yep, blowouts happen in every sport. Six nothing games in hockey, 20 point games in basketball and football. One team get nine runs in the bottom of the first in baseball, and then they got to fill in an hour of every time. It all happens. It all happens. But then there's those rare times when you really do get everything you don't expect. And that's what makes me want to come back and do it. There's been a lot of days this summer that the last thing I wanted to do was stare into a camera and improvise for an hour doing a ball game. Once I got going, it was it was fine. But going there with whatever was going on in the world or whatever was going on at home with my wife and her continuing physical struggles, the last thing I wanted to do was sit there and go, it's... The following is a live presentation, and some days I didn't, but a lot of times I did because it gave me something to do. And once we got going, it gave me something to look forward to. And I love the fact that most times in the chat, it really is kind of a back and forth. And I'll look over like this, and someone will throw up a stat, well, this is what, this is what happened in the real game, or so-and-so threw a two-hitter here, or this was somebody's major league debut. And it's like getting handed a piece of paper on a truck, you know, or hearing something in your ear from the truck. And going, oh, by the way, blah, 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 I hit seven home runs in four games in this series in real life. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what this is all about. The connection with you guys, the the friends that I've made doing this. This I've just said that sometimes it does feel like work. Well, it never really feels like work. I hope at some point in your life that you find something to do that you can do that you might be able to get some money and some pleasure out of that feels like a legitimate joy to do as opposed to the drudgery of, oh, let me put the widget inside the widget inside the widget. It's important to pay the bills, but it's also important to make sure, you know, do something in your life that makes you feel good about, not only good about yourself, but it feels like that you're contributing to something. Whatever, um, no, I'm only at 18 minutes, okay. Whatever that might be. What do we got coming up for year three? Well. The football project is going to be on someone else's channel this year as Al Red Sox fan and I are going to uh, do nine games using Pro Strategy Football 2021. We've teased that a couple times. You can go back to Super Bowl Tournament, all one word, on YouTube and, and watch the Hall of Fame game that we did. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to working a, not only a, a, as a collaborative project, this will be the first project I've done that I'm actually not playing the game. I do not know what's coming before it comes out of my mouth. Normally, I have an idea of what's about to come because I'm the one that either has called the play on offense or football or sets the things in motion of baseball or called my offense in basketball or hockey. Don't have a clue. It's computer versus computer. We're working with an honest-to-God television producer. And we and I, I get to work with Al. I get to work with Al, and I think by the time that we're done with this, that Al's going to be able to channel that enthusiasm that we love in his channel, and uh, we're going to be like Pat and John. I I really get that sense. I'm so excited about that. 
So that's the football project coming up. Yes, I will start putting together my things for, I got to send a note to Roberto, make sure that I have all the current stuff for the 64 Olympics, um, the summer games. Really, I've got the time. We're going to start putting that together this week. But it's such, where do I begin? It's so daunting to do, but we're going to get that done. And it's going to take about a year to do. And I'm so excited to do that. Um, and to bring that to you, which is pure storytelling. It's not a heck of a lot to watch. It's how do I turn basic charts and dice and tables and Excel spreadsheets into something that you want to watch. That's, for me, going to be the challenge. It's like going through and going in the kitchen and going, hmm, okay, I've got butter, I've got cheese, I've got whole wheat spaghetti noodles, and I've got garlic soap. How do I turn it into something I want to eat? Okay, well, I know how to do that, but you know what I'm going with that. Uh, instead of doing a full-fledged football season this year on my channel, we're going to be doing some hockey. We're gonna, I haven't decided what season yet. I want to get through my League Championship Series and World Series before I start doing that, but we will do an action PC hockey project. Always wanted to do one. I know that they don't get great quote-unquote ratings, but darn it, I've realized now that two years into this, this is, you know, I, I want to share this with you. I don't think anyone's really done a full season, not a full 80 games, obviously, but a full weekly hockey package, and the game is mature enough, I think it would be a very good show, and so I look forward to doing that. Plus, We'll be doing some baseball over there if we get a World Series pre-play. Um, and we're going to be doing, I think I think it's going to be 49. It's a season I'm going to do in 2021. Um, maybe the Red Sox will actually show up for a season instead of rolling over and playing dead the two years that I've done. But we'll go back to the, I think 49 will be the year that, that I do. Uh, because it's great races, I think, in both divisions. And so... That's what we got coming up in year three, plus other stuff. I mean, I, I've i done so many different sports. I really enjoy doing the sports. I enjoy challenging myself. And so I guess, what have I learned? Always be willing to learn. I got to sneeze? Of course I don't have to sneeze, but I pause it just in case. Always be willing to learn. That's That's number one. Try new things. I never thought I would like a quick play game. I love them now, or at least some of them. Uh, to get to replay things that and give notice to people who necessarily wouldn't get it in this country is really cool. To share some of the things that my dad would have loved is really cool. Um, to be involved with creators of games, even in some, here comes the sneeze, in some capacity, I did sneeze that time, uh, and and see what they can produce and promote what they're doing, whether it's a little game or something that, like another sneeze coming. Hold on, really? Or not? Uh, is a thrill to do a weekly podcast to share what we like and what we don't like, and to share your experiences. And have a full-fledged conversation with you in the comments uh, once a week has been wonderful. Um, practice makes you all better, of course. I still don't really like going back to watch myself, but sometimes I do. Uh, I always wanted to be a broadcaster. The thrill of, I mean, one of the nice things about covering the Nationals on a nightly basis before. As I'm trying not to sneeze again. Am I going to do this again? Really? No. One of the nice things about covering the Nationals before was that even on a night when you didn't really want to do it because they were either not playing well or it's the third game against San Diego and it's 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon and you'd much rather be doing something else than covering yet another game against the Padres is the crowd. The crowd gets you psyched up. Hearing that noise and knowing what's about to happen. I'm sure it's the same for a musician on tour. Like, oh, God, where the hell are we tonight? The West Lafayette, Indiana. Where were we last night? Muncie, Indiana. Why are we playing in Muncie, Indiana? Because we're getting paid to play in Muncie, Indiana. That's why. Um, that 
There's no better psych up for somebody than that noise of that crowd that you're going to get into it and you're going to do this for the next however length of time and you're going to see things that you hadn't seen before and and I love improvising. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen from the time that I say the following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network until I say, and we'll talk to you tomorrow at noon or tomorrow night at 7 or whatever. I, whatever else happens in there, I have no idea. Yeah, there's a game involved. And that's the thrill is that you're on your own on this ledge and you just don't know what's going to ha happen outside of there being a game in a Baltimore court. You could have a no-hitter. You could have a 20 nothing. You can get a case of the giggles. Uh, you could have some spirited debates. And that, to me, is the thrill. You just don't know what you're going to do. And there's nobody in your ear saying, wrap it up. There's nobody in your ear saying, slow it down. There's nobody in your ear saying that you suck. Uh, it is, yeah, I mean, that's primarily the draw. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. And again, I don't care who wins. It doesn't matter. I am fans of X team and Y team and Z team, but if I feature them and they don't win, it really doesn't matter to me. I, I want the best story. I'm, And so, yeah, usually my projects run about 18 months. Sit fan side about 18 months before I got tired of it. Uh, Bleach Report about 18 months. Other things about 18 months, except for I passed that and I look forward to a full year three. And I hope that when we start looking towards year four next August, that we're all in so much of a better place than we are now. Thank you so much for everything. You guys are the reason why I do this. And I hope that as we move into, as we start year number three, that we continue to con have a good relationship and continue to grow and, and help each other. I'm Ron Juckett. We'll talk to you the next time.